Hey folks, Brian here. Today I wanted to show you how to quickly install protocol buffers and save you from a few paper cuts that I experienced. Also, I wanted to show you how I integrated protocol buffers into my program, using it as a file format to save the user's configuration in my program, and show you how I integrated it into Visual Studio Code to make my development process uh, very convenient and pretty cool. So first we go to the protocol buffers page on developersgoogle.com. We pick our favorite language, which is Go. We scroll down past the propaganda and an example. And we go to the three step process. And they tell us to download the package, which then redirects us to downloading a release on the release page. But what's a little misleading is that these are all zip files for the protocol buffer compiler and they don't include the pre-built binary so what you need to do is actually click on the releases tab again to unlock prior posts and in a prior post you can see that not long ago they created zip files for the various operating systems so maybe they'll appear for that other release soon in my case I'm using Windblows, so I downloaded the Proto-C Win32 zip file. After that, I extracted that to my C colon directory. And you can see that there is a bin with the all important Proto-C compiler in there. If you have a whole ton of other files, you probably downloaded the source code for the compiler. And I was playing around with that for a while, which was an interesting challenge in its own right, but not something I really wanted to do. But anyway, Make sure that you add Proto-C to your environment. Here I've already included it in this and I'm sure you're already experienced with this since you've probably installed Go. But if not, you can see more details about setting the path in my prior videos. Make sure to restart all your terminals and all your editors so that they see the Proto-C compiler. After that, we can then go back to doing step two of the instructions, which was to run the go get command and install the go protocol buffers plugin. As you can see, I've already done that here, but it's okay to do it over and over if you like, but the output is still the same if it's a success, which is nothing. And then after that, you can see there's an example of running the Proto C compiler. And essentially, you give it a include directory, you tell it where to output the generated code for the protocol buffer, and you give it the input file, the protocol buffer uh, file itself. In my case, I have an example here, which is the message for these stocks. And it's a simple message, uh, and I'll let you take a look at that on your own free time. But the main point is that it's in protocol buffer format. It's not something that we can start using in our Go applications to load and save to disk. So what we need to do is execute the Proto-C compiler. And I've taken a derivation of the command that was shown there. And you'll have to do the same for your project. But since my protocol buffer is in the data directory, I made the dash i flag point there. The go out directory is the current directory and I'm executing this within the package directory and finally giving it config.proto the file you're looking at. And if we press enter, what we're going to see is a file magically appear. And now we can see this is the generated code from the message defined in the protocol buffer file. There's a type generated for a message with fields for the child messages. There's some methods. And what is cool to note is that there's an accessor called get for every field. And the get methods have a pointer receiver which can actually be nil, which actually blew me away uh, when I first realized this. But that means you can do something like config get current stock and then get symbol. And if anything's nil through that chain, it's all right. An empty string will eventually be returned. 
So after that, you can use that in your code. And the main things you need to know is that to decipher a protocol buffer, you can call the unmarshal methods. And there are also methods that can read in the text version of protocol buffers. And here I've used unmarshal text. And I'm using the text methods here just so I can keep my files um, user readable. And I've discovered that in order to have these line breaks, you can use the text marshaller type included in the protocol buffer package with compact set to false. And then you call marshal again. So that's how I'm using protocol buffers as a file format in my application. Now the cool part, how do we integrate this into the workflow? What I did was put the proto C command as a go generate directive. What this allows me to do is if I change the protocol buffer by let's say adding another field, I can just type go generate and it will actually automatically update the generated file. Now we can see that foo has appeared. That's convenient because I don't have to remember the proto C command. But now I'm so lazy I don't want to even type go generate. So what I did was I added go generate to my tasks.json file. So my command now is a three step process of generating go generate with go build and running the file. So if I go back to the protocol buffer file, remove the field I just added and type control shift B Visual Studio Code will pop up a terminal and it will run go generate, go build and run the executable all at once. So now I can edit the protocol buffer file and it will generate everything for me as long as I run my build and run command. And here you can see that foo is now gone from the generated file. So Hope that helps you set up protocol buffers with your project. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.